everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today I am answering one of your questions. It was the top asked question in this video that I will link up here. In this dress that Meghan Markle wore, are her nips showing through? Is that nips? Or is it the darts of the dress? I've gotten to the bottom of it for you. But first, it's also important to note when and where she wore it. Meghan and Harry wore this for a private audience with the King and Queen of Tonga at the Consular House. Megan wore this white cap-sleeved custom gown by Thea, I think that's how you say it, with black heels and a matching Givenchy clutch. Now, as you know, if you watched that video, I quite liked the dress for a lot of reasons. She wore this for her first tour with Harry, and in fact, I found the details of this dress from an article that's titled, Excuse me, but Meghan Markle's straight up slaying on her tour of Australia, Fiji, and Tonga. Every gorge outfit right this way. I mean, I'm just saying, she was getting good press. This she wore on October 25th, 2018. After they had recently announced that she was pregnant with Archie, she literally wore a maternity dress a few days before this, which is kind of funny if you think about it, because, you know, when you're like six weeks pregnant, you literally just look bloated. Or, I don't know, five weeks pregnant. However pregnant she was, it wasn't that pregnant enough to wear a maternity dress. So perhaps she was getting a little flack from that in the comments section. And that is the theory a lot of people are running with, that they are more upset about the comments sections than they are the actual headlines themselves, which are oftentimes pretty nice. Anyway, it's darts. It's the darts of the dress. It is not her nips showing through. The darts may have had the slightest bit of a pucker or perhaps, as we've discussed before, if she was wearing a different bra when she tried on or got fitted for the dress than she wore to actually wear the dress out, then it can just change the size and shape of your bust a little bit, enough so that your darts might pucker a little bit or pull a little bit or not land in the exact right location. But yeah, it's darts. But also in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys my favorite new pair of sandals that I've been wearing. I told you guys I was gonna order them, but seven or nine were kind enough to send them to me along with a couple more pairs to try. And I thought it was a good opportunity to share with you guys not only why I love these sandals so much, but also a couple of my best tips for building your shoe collection because good shoes, comfortable shoes, and the cutest shoes that we all love and draw us in and make us want to buy are oftentimes a little bit on the pricey side and shoes and accessories both can really take a toll on your budget. So I've got a couple of tips on how to sort of prioritize and what's the best pair of shoes to buy first, especially in terms of nicer shoes. So let's get into that section of today's video. Okay, so here are the sandals. These had caught my eye right from the get-go because they look like denim. They are so cute, and I just think they are super adorable, perfect summery sandal, but they're versatile enough that they're gonna look great in spring and fall as well, especially with that denim sort of texture or appearance to this area here very cushiony. They are very comfortable shoes. They are actually something that I will spend money on this brand of shoes because they fit my feet well and they are comfortable. And once I know something is comfy and fits good, then I feel safe spending money on it. It can be a little dicey or a little intimidating to buy a nice pair of shoes or spend a lot of money or go a little outside of your budget on shoes from a different brand that you're not sure if they're gonna feel super good on your feet or not. You're not sure if they're gonna match your proportions because that's so important with shoes. So. I understand the pressures and I understand how that feels. I am quite petite. I wear a size five and a half and my feet are not particularly narrow. When it comes to buying shoes for your wardrobe and investing in shoes for your wardrobe, some of the most flashiest pairs of shoes like these red pumps that are just so fun and eye-catching are not gonna be the most versatile in everybody's wardrobe. Now, if you're somebody who wears a lot of red or who likes wearing a pop of color in your shoes, you like having that be sort of an accent that you add to your outfit or you buy a red purse and it will go with a lot of clothes to wear 
um, red pumps or red shoes, even if you get flats or something. It doesn't necessarily have to be pumps. If you like wearing an accent color in your shoes and accessories and that works for your wardrobe, then to me, red is a real classic choice. It's quite versatile compared to some of the other bright colors. Like for example, yellows, greens, and oranges might have a harder time pairing up with a matching purse, getting to go with all sorts of different tones in your wardrobe. But red, I feel like is one of those that is similar to blue in its ability to match up with different tones a little bit easier. So to me, the easiest accent colors to gravitate towards are going to be red, blue, and purple. Another quick note, they sent me this gorgeous bit of shoe jewelry, or you could wear it as an anklet to go with these red pumps. I am obsessed. How beautiful is that? Now, I've already shown you guys my black pumps from 7 or 9, which I absolutely love. They black pumps are a great place to start. You can pair black pumps up with a more casual top and jeans. Black pumps are one of the most versatile besides nude neutral sorts of pumps. These are a taupe sort of a color, so they're not like skin tone nude, obviously, but they are nude enough that they will go with lots of different things and play nice as a neutral, particularly a cool toned neutral. So besides going for a black pair of shoes, pumps, flats, whatever it is that you're after, besides going for a pair that's just all black, nice and simple, easy to wear, I would say go for some sort of a neutral tone. Or more closer to your skin tone, whatever you can find that you like or whatever feels right to you. Um, any sort of a nude, even if it doesn't match perfectly, will be a good neutral option to pop on when you need a pair of shoes to go with almost any outfit. So I would say like the top two priorities, if you're not somebody into an accent color, even if you are into an accent color, is to get a black pair and a nude pair. Besides that, that's where you get to have fun. And like I said, this counts for boots, loafers, flats, heels, any sorts of shoes you're after. Then it's time to bring in color and you can feel free to pick something that you find super duper cute, super duper fun. And like I said, blue really works like a neutral a lot of times. So that can be a great place to start exploring with color if you don't wear a lot of color in your shoes. Well, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that you found it somewhat interesting and we solved the mystery of the darts in that dress. If you are interested in 7 or 9 brand shoes or, or you're looking to do a little shoe shopping and you want to know a brand that is comfortable, I can highly recommend them. All the links are in the description box and I have a discount code for you guys. It's Kelly10. I hope you guys have a happy day today and I will see you in the next video. Bye!